right guys welcome back to the channel Nigel here with you Nigel's Modeling Bench and uh, here we have our Hurricane from Ravel this is the brand new 130 second scale new tool kit and it's very nice I reckon a couple of little issues with it but nothing much at all really um, so we're literally here now a few hours three hours after I uh, I did the part four and if you remember I painted the underside with all the pre-shading and done a couple of repairs on it and everything so that's all looking good. Still not fully hardened off yet, so um, I'm putting it on this paper towel to avoid getting the bottom scratched. In the meantime, I've gone on and painted the interior frames of the glazing. And you can see here, these are done in the interior green. As you can see, Jess is under the table doing her normal thing. So uh, yeah, they're painted in the interior green. And I've used the masks that I got sent from, from um, Peter over at Artscale. There's a one of the uh, under the um, down in here, down in the um, wheel well. I couldn't think of the name then. That's one of those I tried to put them back. I was going to put all these back, but it's just no way. Um, so I've used all the interior ones. You can see you get the interior masks on here and you get the exterior. So I've used the interior. I'm not putting the exterior on before I glue the windshield on because I want to clamp it down. And also, I'm going to have to put some Mr. Surfacer around it to get a nice seam-free joint. And I always worry, when I take the Mr. Surfacer off with the cotton bud, I always worry the acrylic thinners is going to get underneath the masking tape and affect the gluing. But um, they fit, as you can see, they were quite nice. A um, couple of little issues, I think, probably more down to me than, than the actual templates themselves. But we'll see how they look. Believe it or not, I have never, ever built a kit... I was thinking about this, I can't believe it. I've never built a kit using internal masks, so you, you can actually paint the interior. What we normally do is just put them on the outside, spray interior green, and then spray your camouflage on top. So when you look inside, you see interior green. Only trouble with that is when you look inside, you see a glossy interior green because it's on the outside. And apparently, I am led to believe, I remember chatting to somebody at Telford a few years ago, and apparently this looks astounding if you get it right, because when you look through, obviously when you look, if you get it perfect, when you look straight on, you don't see the interior framing. But when you look on an angle, you do, which is just how it is in real life. Because you've got to remember, there's a frame on the inside and a frame on the outside, probably. And your, your um, perspex is in the middle. So you will have an internal frame and an exterior frame. So be interesting to see how it looks. I mean, already I can put that on there. And you can see just how good that looks. And I would really recommend, as Paul said, get yourself the masking or any masking set for this kit. I can only recommend this one. It's brilliant. Um, because the there is hardly any... I, mean, I, can, I can just about feel a frame on there. So it's going to be a nightmare putting the outside ones on. But uh, never mind. So I'm going to get on and put this front one in. So what I'm going to do first of all is grab my knife and remove some paint from here. I sprayed these a couple of hours ago, so the paint should be nice and hard now. If you if you try and do this too soon with Tamiya acrylic paint, you tend to sort of peel it off. You don't get a nice sharp edge. So we'll do that. There's no glue going under there, but there is glue going across the front, but there's no paint on there. And then what I'm going to do here is just remove a bit of paint there because what I don't want to do is have grey plastic showing through the canopy now luckily on here you can see that I've got bloody green paint on the instrument panel top of the instrument panel there I'm going to have to sort that uh, am I going to be able to sort that after this has gone on no I'm going to have to do that now so I'm going to have to get some black paint in there and just paint those areas so what we can do is just scrape, scrape the paint away from there so that we've got a nice area to glue to. Same here, we'll just scrape a little bit across from the top, being careful not to damage our instrument panel. So there we go. Right, so I'm going to go and paint that bit there black, and I'll come back. All right, so that's done. Painted black now. So now we can uh, fit this clear part onto here, our windscreen. 
and we want to get as good a fit as possible so that when we come in with the Mr. Surfacer we've got the smallest gap possible to fill. Now I'm just wondering if I can get away with clamping this and gluing it because that's what I want to do rather than tape it. You see it's kind of popping up but it's not particularly strong. It's not it's not really sort of really sort of pushing up, it's just popping up. I'm not sure if I can get away with clamping this. Let's have a look. Let's get my famous clamp out. Whoops. This is the thing you see, is there's hardly any pressure on at all, but it it's then easy to pull off. It's sort of the weight of the thing pulls itself off. I also don't want to break the clear part by over clamping it, but that's actually it held in position. Which looks like, oh no, it's not going to hold, it's, it's, the angle's too great. So I'm going to have to tape it, which I didn't really want to do, because there's always a risk if you tape it that the glue will get near the tape. So I'm going to get this sorted and then I'll come back. You don't want to watch me fumbling with this, do you? Okay, so there we go. That's the canopy held in place. We've got a couple of cocktail sticks in there to keep the tape away from the glue joint so that it doesn't get pillory under the tape and ruin the clear part. So I've, I've, I've put a bit of extra thin quick setting around there. I'm just going to leave that now for a good, I don't know, it's night time. So I'm going to leave that till tomorrow morning and let that go hard. And then we can go in there with some Mr. Surfacer and then we'll probably do a bit of tarting up with something or other so that part can go back in the box now we don't need that one anymore and then that one's going to get the uh going to get the masking treatment and that one's going to go on like that you can see we now have a hurricane that's looking proper proper smart so uh see you in a minute for you okay so we've uh, we've pushed on a bit here <clears throat> ready to do camouflage the bottom is all masked up now so i would have used paper but for the size of these wings, you know, something like a Lancaster, I would use paper, but something like this, there's no, no point in using paper. Um, <clears throat> I've done the sky band. I forgot to do that when I was actually painting the, the underside. So I've done the sky band now. Um, masked, masked off everything, basically. And um, before we do any painting, we'll go around and check. And obviously, you can see that there is lifting. So I'm going to have to put some more tape on there while I think of it. So I will put a piece of tape across here now. And that will help. To hold that bit down, make sure we don't get any spraying. I'm going to go over and do some shading anyway to lighten everything out down a bit. So I've just found my RAF colour mixes chart, and according to the colour mix chart, they should have some white in it to lighten it down a bit. It's a little bit too green, so uh, we'll do some post shading on there. Um, so I left you the canopy, I glued it on, left it overnight, taped down and everything. I've got on Mr. Surfacer and a cotton bud, just removed it. I've redone the um, the black pre-shading lines. I fitted the lovely masks from the uh, ASK masking set, which as I said is really, really nice. Um, a masking set for this kit is a must because there's just hardly any framework showing on the windows. So uh, yeah, done that. So we're good to go on there. Um, and also done the, the main canopy. You can see the interior green through there. So I'm going to use my mix of RAF green, which is basically um, XF58 for one by XF62 for five. And then the RAF dark brown, the dark earth is XF52 for one, XF54 for one. So uh, there we go. Um, so let's have a quick look and see how this comes out. We're just I'm just going to, I don't want to get paint on this mat, so I'm just going to change this mat over. So we'll see how this looks. I'll just do a little test spray first. So we'll see how this looks. I've got a pretty thin mix here because I want to be able to build it up in layers on the model to kind of hide the um or to, so I don't hide don't hide sorry so I don't hide the um the pre-shading
and there we go. So happy with that. That looks great. So let's see how we get on with painting the aircraft. Let's just quickly do around here. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? So I'm going to get on and get the rest painted and then I'll come back and uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay, so we've moved on a bit here. Um, right, so I said I made my RAF green from XF58 and XF62. I then looked down the chart that I've got and I noticed that another page said, another bit said XF58 for one, XF62 for five and XF2 for one. So I've lightened it down a bit because it was a bit dark. So I think it looks a lot better now. Um, if anything, it, perhaps it's a little dark still. But uh, anyway, but I also made the uh, the brown. I can't remember now what I used. I will tell you before the video is out. Um, but basically the video, the, the brown is, uh, is homemade as well. So we've got the green and the brown there, which I'm quite happy with. I've got the AK Real Colours, green and brown. But I'll be honest with you, I'm not that happy with them. Um... I think the green is a little light, although I'll give it a go on something else and maybe it dries darker. This certainly dries darker. When you look at it there, you can see that looks a lot lighter than that. <clears throat> so maybe it'll dry darker. But to give you an idea, with the, with the IDF colours, the um, IDF, the AK Real Colours, um, they have this one, which is US Interior Yellow Green. I mean, look at that. It's just wrong. It's just completely wrong. It's more like gray green for the UK you know it's it's um some of their real colors I think are a bit suspicious so we say but so anyway um but I'm happy with this as long as it looks right I mean the thing is there are so many different shades and I can read you an excerpt from a book on the hurricane you know um when they change from black and white undersides they change to this sky color it was made of a mix and it was a, a dedicated mix they were told to use and one of the contents was a certain pale green or something. And they started to run out. So what did they do? Did they stop production of hurricanes? Do they have the paint? No. They sent hurricanes out that basically were sort of nearly white underneath. So, you know, all this about shades and stuff, it's all a bit... The... So uh, anyway, um, as you can see, we've done the green. I've then gone in with the sausages. These are sausages of white tack. I use white tack because it's less greasy than, than blue tack. Um, and just ordinary masking tape to fill in the gaps. The reason I'm doing this is they do have a, a sprayed edge, but it, it is quite hard. It's nothing like, like Revel have done on the front of their instructions here. They've got a very, very soft edge on there. Um, I don't think that's at all accurate. I think it's a lot, it's a soft edge, but it's a lot harder than just a, what I can get with an airbrush. I may go around afterwards and do some work, but um, the other thing with this is, if you do freehand camouflage, you always tend to get a um, a kind of, uh, I've seen it on lots of aircraft, you can see where they've gone round the edge and, done, and then filled in, and the edge is always a more solid colour, so, but anyway, this is, um, this is what I've done here, and this is just cheap masking tape, which I'm going to reuse, even though it's cheap. I'm hoping it doesn't pull any of the paint off underneath because remember I didn't prime this and we will have to be a bit careful because the white tack obviously has double adhesion to the tape. I'm going to put the tape here so I can reuse it all. Waste not, want not. So we'll just do, we'll do one little bit on camera just so you can see how it comes out. So we'll pull that off of there like so. That's coming off beautifully. For there okay and then we can pull this white tack off and as you can see we've got no greasy residue left behind and what we get is a kind of soft hard edge if you like and I think it looks a lot more authentic particularly I mean at the moment you're looking at it because it's like ah, it's in your face but once it's weathered and, and dropped back a bit it looks a lot better these bits here, you can see where there's white stuck there. If you just go over with another bit of white tack, I'll just wipe it away. 
it will come off. There you go. But once we sort of rub it over, once it's dry, we'll give it a rub over with a very, very light sponge or even just a piece of paper. Um, but there we go. So I didn't have enough to do the whole thing, so I'm having to do it bit by bit. But um, we'll just have a look at this tail blade while we're here. Because we can. We've got plenty of time. Come off tape, please. Thank you. We can pull that off with the blue tack. You can see again there, you've got that sort of soft but hard edge. And I think it looks really impressive. I will also be doing this on my Lancaster, which is not far off being painted. I've been saying that for about two months now. Um, so there we go. So happy with how that's coming out. And uh, I'll just get the rest unmasked and get the rest painted. And then I'll come back when it's done. There we go, all done. So happy with that. We'll get that sorted out in a minute. Big blob of white tack. So let's have a look at the, uh, what we've done here. I've scratched it. Luckily, I've still got brown paint in the airbrush. I haven't cleaned the airbrush yet. So we can just touch that in. Just like so. There we are. I've obviously caught it on something before the paint's hardened. So uh, yeah, I've scratched it there as well. And there. There we go. So uh, luckily it's a World War II aircraft and it's beat about, so it doesn't really matter if it's got a few nicks and dings in it. So let's have a look at this, because um, I know you all love an unmasking, everybody does. Let's have a look at this stripe, let's see how this came out. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. Lovely. There we are, a little bit of narrow tape around the edge just to get a nice sharp line in it. And um, we need to get rid of that bit of tape there. There we go. You can see now we've got that stripe around the tail there, nice and sharp. And that was the, the little one and a half millimeter tape. That was this stuff, which is the um, Izu micro masking tape. You get that from Premium Hobbies. It's um, awesome for doing like wing walkways and stuff. Uh, saves you cutting the strips yourself. And it's, as you can see, you get a very sharp edge. So you're painting it's very very sharp indeed there's one little bit there where i've obviously had something under the tape but other than that really really nice so happy that that's come out so um i think what we'll do is let this dry now for a good few hours let it go hard who misses and then in fact what we need to do is get the bottom unmasked but i think before we start doing that i think i'll let the top go hard and uh and then we'll give it a clear coat and when we can start looking at some decals you might be wondering why i'm not doing weathering I never weather before decals because the decals were on there when the weathering occurred. When it came out of the factory, brrr, like that, it was like this. And then they would have put some you know, some um, letters on it, whatever. And then it would have gone into service. And when it went into service, another thing I need to remember to paint brown is this, the antenna. Um, when it went into service, it would have been weathered. So the decals, if you had a scratch on the wing there, it would have gone through the round. If there was a scratch down there, or some exhaust staining or chipping or whatever it would be on the on the lettering as well so that's why we do that first so we'll let this dry now put it in the air and cupboard overnight let it go nice and hard and it oh misses again and then um and then we'll get a clear coat down on it and there we go guys she's had a good sort of um i don't know 10 hours drying off and then i've given her a clear coat i just noticed another scratch there never mind um so yeah she's had a clear coat so uh hopefully all being well, the decals are good and lovely. If you are new to the hobby, when I say giving it a clear coat, you're not after the ultimate gloss shine. As long as it's got a sheen to it, it's okay. What you're trying to do really, more than anything, is seal the paint um, so that you get you get a smoother finish. You can hear it's not perfect. Matte paint will very rarely be perfectly smooth unless you polish it. But um, yeah, we're, uh, we're we're good to go now with the. Um, with it like that and the decals they're cartographed so i'm sure they're going to go down absolutely fine if it was something like a hobby boss kit i would be going for an absolute shine or a tamiya with tamiya decals because the decals are so thick they won't go down they just won't go down so this is um been sprayed with uh, alclad aqua gloss which i'm not even sure if you can get anymore but uh, it's very very good stuff it's just one pack pour it in the airbrush spray it what you don't use pour it back and that's it but don't shake it but um, yeah, you can see we've got a gloss sheen on there, so again, we'll leave that for now for another 
good 10 12 hours and then we'll start looking at doing some deckling so uh hopefully she'll start to take on a bit of a hurricane appearance rather than um rather than all bits and pieces but uh and the other thing is remember it'd be a good test actually for these ask uh, window masks a lot of people say you should never leave them on for more than 24 hours but when you think you you fit your canopy and everything and you you get all the blending down and then you might put a primer down you leave that for a few hours to dry and then you might put a, a coat of paint down and you leave that for a few hours to dry and then you might do some corrections and leave that a few hours to dry and then do your mask and do your other color before you know it you're on like 24 36 hours at the earliest now we've got to get decaline done and then get a clear coat down to seal it and then do our weathering and everything and then do a flat coat to seal everything down in you know this is going to be on here for four four or five days so you know I, when they say 24 hours i don't think it's really practical but um anyway happy with how it's come out and it's looking like a hurricane i hope you'll agree it's looking lovely so uh, and i love the edge on this camouflage it's worked out really well so uh there we go there we are 24 hours later and the decals are on as you can see they have gone down a treat they are probably the nicest decals I've ever used. Um, as I know, as I said, they're cartograph. They have gone down absolutely beautifully. The only thing I don't like about them is the red centers are separate decals on the underside and on the sides. These are obviously all one piece, but you have to sort of position these in the center and get them as good as you can by eye. And you kind of look at them and you can always convince yourself they're not right. I've cut out the uh, decal there over the ejector shoots for the guns as you can see but as you can see they've gone down beautifully into all the panel lines and over all the rivets and everything really really nice on the top of the wings here you've got these bulges on top of the wing that um that they didn't really want to go down over so i ended up cutting the deck and pushing it down over and then um and then sort of painted that blue just made up a bit of blue and black paint and just painted those little those little sticky up nubbins there um i've done the gun covers here these were actually i don't know if they were dope linen or tape or what they were i don't know what they had in the 40s um but basically they covered all the guns to stop the cold air going and stop them icing up so as you can see on this one here it's kind of draped over there and then plenty of deco setting solution it's made it go down as it would have done they would have kind of wrapped it around the gun and just pressed it on and as you can see, I've purposely not put them all straight. Okay, so little tip for this, if you're doing something like this, put them so they're obviously not straight. You can see this one on the end here, it's obviously not straight. If you do them all so they're just sort of slightly out, it'll look like you've put your decals on bad. It needs to be obvious. So uh, make sure you get it right. But um, there we go. Really, really, really pleased. Lots of stencil data. Um, cause for concern here when you look at your the guide it's like the guy that did the decals didn't have this paint guide on him because if you look at like this side here they've got the the lettering here is between the n and the v okay well that lettering there as you can see is underneath the v there's no way that's going to fit the other thing is the positioning if you look here they're showing you that this this v is over the center of those three studs there okay and I've got my V over the center of the well just slightly behind over those three studs there and you can see how this is all bunched up whereas on here it all looks quite spread out so be a little bit careful uh, what I did on this side I sort of roughly I put the D in that put that down put the roundel down and then realized that all of this was too high and I had to try and soak it and get it to move again so way to do it You've got that's one decal, that's one decal up with a separate centre, and that's one decal. Get them all in the water, get them all wet, get your solution down, get them all on, and then line all three up together and then deal with them. Don't do it like I did, because uh, you'll see as well on the other side, they're showing this N here is being right up behind that panel underneath the canopy. You can see if I'd have put it up there, you can see how far spread out they'd have been. So and then when you look on the front of the instructions you've got the picture of the built model Haha, -ha, he's got it way behind like i have so um there you go so uh yeah just get them on there i mean they they were roughly painted anyway so just 
get them to go on. And remember, the stencils would have been on there before this. So feel free to paint over the stencils if you like. Um, you know, this one here says that there's something in there or whatever. I don't know if they would have reapplied the lettering afterwards, but I put the stencil on first, so that's the way it's gone for me. So um, there we are. So what it needs now is another clear coat to seal the decals. If you're wondering why I'm doing that and you're new to the hobby, when we put a wash on there, a wash will run into all the corners and pick up all the edges and everything. And obviously the decal, think of it as like a sticker on the surface, it has an edge and the wash will go into that edge. And you can also, if I can catch it in the light, you can see that edge. If I put another clear coat over the top, it will blend it in. I could even sand it if I want to. Um, it will blend it in and it will be like it's painted on. It will look lovely. So uh, normally with 30 second scale, I would suggest getting masks and painting your roundels and stuff. But these decals are just a dream. And the other thing I'll do is wipe it over with a wet cloth first to get any um, excess solutions off and stuff. But uh, really, really pleased with this. It's really coming together well and I'm um, really happy with how it's looking. Um, also, I was chatting to Paul last night. Paul, uh, Paul, who's a plastic monkey, who's building one of these. Um, I've actually overtaken him, believe it or not. It is now the 21st of... Um, it is the 21st of January, 2023. I actually had this kit delivered on the 9th. So in, what's that, 12 days, if you look back, I reviewed it on the 9th when I got it. In 12 days, I've actually built it. So that's very unusual for me and having it this close to being finished as well. So um, it's great. But it's, it's because the, the Spitfire has been stalled and the Lancaster has been stalled because of masks from two different reasons um, that I've been able to f fire into this. So now I'm going to get back on the Spitfire and do some work on that without the canopy. But um, the... I've done the spinner and the propeller blades and everything, and they look absolutely so. I'm not going to push them right on because they're really difficult to get off. You can see that that all looks lovely when it's on there. So it's it's really starting like a hurricane. Somebody commented that it looks like it's got hurricanes lines, and I really do think it does. Um, the wheels, I, I masked the wheels with the scale masks. They come with the, um, you can see here I've used them. Uh, they give you sides for both sides, but the thing is you've got separate wheel centers, so you don't really need a mask for there, and they fit really nicely as well. So, But uh, I masked them. They work really, really well. Um, I'm really happy with that. I've got the tail wheel one slightly mispositioned, but I think once I put a wash in there, it won't notice. But uh, all looking good. So, um, yeah, very, very happy with how this is going. Very happy with these scale masks. As I said, I had to do a tiny little trim if you got these. On this line here, okay, on the canopy, there's a bar running across there, and this one here fits perfectly. The one on the top, I just it, it was just sort of exaggerated, it was like that on this edge, so it made that bar tapered. And what I've done, I've just literally cut it's probably less than half a mil off it, it's like a wedge to get it back to the right shape again. But um just just a little tip for you there. So there we are. So they've all gone down beautifully. We've got no silver in. So as I say, we're going to give it a clear coat and uh, and go from there. And then we can um, start looking at washes and stuff. I think I'll get an initial panel wash on it just to pick up all the panel lines. And then we'll give it a good old wipe over and then give it a flat coat and do some weathering. So um, I'll get the clear coat on and then I'll come back when we're going to do a wash. One other thing I want to talk about before I forget. Um, priming. Now, this kit has gone together really, really well. The finish on the plastic was really, really nice. So for speed, I thought I won't bother priming it. Big mistake, okay? I always prime my models, as you well know, and I didn't prime this one. As I say, big mistake. Um, what you haven't seen on camera, when I did this, although I can't remember if I showed you this or not, there is a seam here in the fuselage. This is one piece of plastic, there's no seam. But there is a seam here. And as you can see, that seam has disappeared, as has that little panel for that hatch. But never mind, I'm not going to worry about that now. Um, so, as we all know, with solvent glues, and I tell you all the time, and I, I keep saying it, when you've got a, a, a seam glued together with solvents and that, it may look lovely, and after a few days, you will get the seam reappear, a ghost seam. So when you do do fuselage halves and stuff, it's best to leave it for at least a week if you can. Let that happen, and then you can deal with the seam. So if I'd have primed it, 
I would have seen that seam. OK, and then I could have dealt with it. There was some work in somewhere else as well. There was something back here I had to do, wasn't there? There was something in there. There was something on one of the wing, light, wing, uh, wing lights. Um, so basically, for being lazy and not priming it, it's cost me a load of time. So what I did, when I sprayed the green, I saw the seam come back. So I sprayed some green paint along there, and I thought, I'll let that go hard, and I'll like, use the green paint as like a filler. So I got my um, 400 grit hard stick out, and I sanded it, and then I sponged it. I thought, great, that's great. I can't feel anything. The seam is gone. So I went over to some green paint again, and I noticed that what I'd done is put a flat on there. So instead of it sort of being a nice constant radius, it had a flat, and then it went away. So I thought that doesn't look any good. So I had to sand it again and sand it around and then paint it green again. So I didn't show you any of that because it was me basically being absolutely stupid. But if I'd have primed it in the first place, I would have seen that and then dealt with it when it was in primer. And I wouldn't have had to worry about all the colour and everything. Um, I would have seen the marks on the wing. I would have seen the area under here I had to do. I would have seen everything I've had to repair. But just because I've been lazy and not bothered priming it. Oh, and the other thing is the scratches. As you can see, I've got a scratch here, didn't I? Which I had to repair. I've got scratches elsewhere. There's one there. There's one there. I've only got to touch the paint and it scratches because there's no primer under it. So... And it's, um, it's basically Tamiya paint thing with Mr. Colour Leavening Thinners. So it's got no real sort of resistance. It needs a primer to bite into. It's better than Vallejo or anything, but um, it's, it's not as good as, um, as it would be if I had a primer. So lesson to self, always prime your models. And I was being lazy. And for the sake of a drop of Mr. Surfacer and 10 minutes giving it a coat of primer, it's cost me a lot, a lot of work. So... Um, let that be a lesson to you all. Prime your models. So they've had a, a clear coat, as I said, and I've only clear coated where the decals are. There's no point in clearing clear coating the whole thing because every time you add more paint, you start to lose detail. The, the, the sharp panel lines tend to get softened. So just do it where the decals are. And as you can see, if I can catch this in light, the edge of the decal has pretty much disappeared. You can still just see it and you can keep going and sanding if you want. Now what I've done here, you can see on this one I've lightly sanded it so it's lost its shine. But you may also see there's a couple of tiny little white flecks in there. And that is where you've got dust in the paint or flecks or whatever. You remember, remember you have a sort of slightly rough surface. You could have some raised detail work there, whatever. It could even be little bubbles in the decals or whatever, but you will get these tiny little white dots appear if you've got anything there at all. So if you want to sand your decals, make sure you've got the model absolutely, you know, crystal smooth before you start putting them down. I'm not going to worry about that because after all, this is going to get weathered, so it doesn't really matter. But um, you can just sand your decals out. And what I've used here is a 3000 grit, um, stick and I'm not using a sponge I'm using a stick so that I can just sand it and it will take off the clear coat on top of the decal and sort of blend it in if you use a sponge it will do the same thing but the trouble is a sponge will conform and just basically soften what's already there so if you can imagine if this is the decal on my hand if I use a hard stick I only sand the raised area. If I use a sponge, it conforms like like that. It conforms to the area that I'm sanding. So as I go over the edge of the decal, it will conform to it. Whereas with this one, it will only sand the top because it doesn't conform. So, you know, you, you pay your money, it takes your choice. Now, and also, as you can see now, all that carrier film that was on them has completely, well, pretty much completely disappeared. So we're good to go now. And that's why I seal them in. It takes away all of the issues with carrier film and edges and stuff for when we come and do our weathering. Now, if you do this and you find you have spots in the decal in the carrier film, like say you have one right in the middle of that B there, um, what you can do is just, what that's called is silvering. It's where you've got air underneath the decal. And when you, when you go over it, it looks like it's, it looks silver. You can just literally cut it open, put some setting solution in there. Um, at the end of the day, you know, you can just go stronger and stronger and stronger until it just disappears and, um, and you're good to go. 
and then anywhere like here where it's been feathered out we can just sand and just feather it out just like that and uh, I think there was something over here there was a bit of fluff or something in there you need to be careful sanding on this model because it has the the ribbing on it from the um from the fabric skin but uh basically you can't you know you can't really go wrong it's a world war ii aircraft it's gonna get scratched and beaten up as we've said before so we can just sand it away to our heart's content now you can see there you can see there the carrier film probably but it's sort of blended out and soft now rather than being a hard edge and then if you remember you could definitely see the carrier film on those stencils and that's pretty much disappeared you can see the step there slightly but the the actual carrier film has disappeared. I haven't gone over these because these are actually stickers that are applied after the aircraft is painted. So why would I want to feather those in when that's how they should be? So uh, there we go. Um, so yeah, really happy that that's come out. We can also see there in the light. Again, I should have primed this model. It would have showed up. But we can see some ghost marks there from where I've glued those panels in have the guns in them but they're very very shallow and they're only really showing because it's glossy I think when it's had a matte coat they won't show but uh, I won't tell anybody if you don't let's put it that way so um there we go so we can just as we say we can sand our decals blend them in whatever or just leave them it's completely up to you um, I just wanted to do this just to show you the effect of what happens if you do sand them and if you do have little flecks of dust like if we look at this one in the light we catch it in the light we can see there are tiny little areas where there's a bit of dust or a bit of paint spatter or whatever under there and it's just, just you know when you sand it it will become apparent so there we go. it's actually not showing up on this one because it's a lot smaller I'm just going to wet that area And sometimes you'll be sanding and you'll find you'll go through the decal. Don't worry about it. It's, um, you know, in real life, it's not a decal. It's a sprayed on color. And if the paint was really thin in one area, the sun will soon bleach its way through. So there we go. So I'm just going to leave it at that now. Um, that's good enough for me. And then we're going to give it an oil wash when it's all uh, when it's all dry. So I've got some of my Modeler's World oil wash this is the industrial dirt color it's very it's like a very very dark dirty gray color it's not as harsh as black uh, but it's better than like brown so it's a great color to use and it's just I'm just going to use this just to pick up in the panel lines and then we can go over the cloth and just wipe it all off afterwards so I've got some here in an upturned Tamiya pot and I've just got a brush here all I'm going to do is just dab this on and let it run into all the panel lines just like so I'm sure you've all seen this before, but in case you haven't, I thought I'd show it. You can see there, I'm just going to dab some into those fasteners. And we're basically going to pick up every single recessed detail on the model. And it will just basically just bring it to life, as you can see, rather than just having like a canvas. Now, if you remember, I did a pre-shade on here. The pre-shade hasn't showed well through the paint, probably because I mixed it too thick or whatever. But basically, um, what I might do is some post-shading. So I'll basically go over with like a smoke colour over all the panel lines and that will give us the same sort of effect. But we'll see how this looks once we've got this down because, as I say, as I said earlier in my, I think it was in my previous video, pre-shading is something that a lot of people do but it's not actually strictly correct it's not you don't tend to see aircraft with darkened areas between their panels so you can see what i'm doing here i'm just putting this down and letting it capillary along the panel lines and then once it's dry we'll rub it off and there we are she's had the wash and it's had about half an hour to dry so you can see now we've got all this dark stain everywhere so what I do now a piece of old t-shirt I recommend not using paper towel because it's quite coarse it can scratch things and it can be all bitty and stuff 
something that is really annoying. I was wiping this over. You know how much I've looked after this little antenna on the tail here and I put tape over it and looked after it and looked after it. I was wiping this down before I clear coated it to get the residue from the decals and caught it and snapped it off. So after all that taking care I needn't have bothered. So with the paper towel, with the paper towel, not with paper towel, with t-shirt material, we're just going to wipe off after about, I don't know, after about three quarters of an hour, half an hour or whatever, we're just going to wipe away the excess Okay, and just leave the actual, leave the oils in the panel lines. So we, we, we can go in all directions or, we, or you can just go in the direction of airflow. Okay, and this will just give you oils in the panel lines. Now, you get a bit like there that's a bit tough. You can just get some odorless thinners and wipe it off. But, um... The object of the exercise is not to have a massively dark, you know, you don't want a thick black line where the panel lines are. You just want something like that just to break the surface up. And then when it's got a flat car on it, it'll look bloody great. And for those of, the, for those of you that have read and heard and thought and said that this kit has soft moulding and it's not very nice, just take a look at that. Those panel lines around the engine covers. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's lovely. So it's, it's getting a bit of a undeserved hard time. I think this kit. To be honest, I mean you all know that I'll give a kit a hard time. As far as accuracy goes, I don't have a clue. I don't know the subject. All I know is a lot of people have said that the hurricane I've seen on Paul's channel. Apparently the hurricane appears to have good lines. So we can see here this removing this oil. And now you can see what I said about the pre-shading. You can see that we've got this dark panel line, but the actual pre-shading sort of fades into it and it kind of it just brings it all to life and it gives it sort of something of interest to look at rather than just having a I've also noticed that I caught that there when I ground out that area to get the flaps in I caught the tool on it so uh, oops I'm not correcting that now not after it's all painted and everything but uh, I'll just carry on and do this keep going as you can see I've still got the masks in I'm not taking any masks out until after the flat coat has gone on because obviously you don't want to be flat oh, I've just broken that elevator off damn it you don't want to be flat coating um, your clear parts, do you? Your, your windscreen and everything. So obviously we'll leave the mask on for that. And any, any areas like this, let's say where it's a bit stubborn, you might find a bit of wet off your finger will work. There we go. Or a bit of odorless thinners, whatever. It's just where it's found something to stick to. So, yeah, that's broken. It's still stuck in that end, but it's broken in there. So I'll have to sort that. I'll do that off camera. What I don't want to do is break it any further. I should probably run a bit of super glue into there from the underneath. I'll use the black super glue before we put the flat on because well, I've broken that one as well. Look. Oh. Yeah, it's broken those pins off. What's happened there, I think, I think this oil wash has attacked the plastic. You can see there, they've, they've broken off cleanly. I think the oil wash has attacked the plastic. So be careful, guys. Obviously, we've got the same issue here. There's something wrong with this plastic. Um, plastic monkeys have the same problem. I've had the same problem. Ordinary Tammy Extra Thin doesn't seem to work with it very well. It needs the uh, the quick setting to kick it to get it to work. And now that. So I haven't seen that on anything other than a Bandai kit. Uh, so And I've certainly never seen it with this product. This model is World Wash. So um, you have been warned. That's going to be a nightmare to stick back on. I'll probably brass pin them. Just like I did on my Spitfire. So we can wipe all the wash off of there. And as you can see, it just leaves a nice line in there. So there we go. I'll carry on doing this. I'm not going to bore you with... Me, what should we do the whole thing 
And so I'll carry on doing this. We'll do the whole underside as well. You can see it really works on the underside. On the top, you can see that wing there. It's just it's just gently picking up the panel lines and just it's just giving you something to look at rather than a rather than just a, a, a green and brown lump. So there we go. So I'll get all this off and when I'm happy with it, I'll give it a flat coat and I will repair these um, in the meantime as well. So uh, yeah, bit of a shame, but never mind. I should repair them, but that was going to have to come off as well. You can see the plastic has just gone very, very brittle. So um, word of warning to you. Right, so I'll get those back on. And I'll see you all for part six. Uh, not sure how long this video has been, but it's 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 a point where I want to make a natural break. And then what we will do, we will come back for part six. We will get a flat coat on her. We will get all the final assembly done, all the little bits and pieces, and then we'll give her a bit of a weather, some oil streaking or whatever. Put some um, some staining underneath, and then go from there. So thank you for watching. I will see you all soon. Hopefully I'll be back for part six, unless this um, oil wash gets in there and just rots everything and then the whole thing will start to fall apart, we shall see. But, uh, it can get that bad, believe me. Uh, if you do have a Bandai kit, don't ever give it an oil wash like I did with this. And let it flow into all the panel lines and stuff, because uh, you will find your model falling to bits. So there we go. You have been warned. Right. I shall see you all for part six. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Any questions, pop them down below. And please remember, by the time you see this video, this model is finished. So telling me that I don't need to be doing this or I need to put this on like this way round or whatever. <laughs> I've already done it. So uh, there we go. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.